You know, what's worse, you know, hip hop wearing skirts or hip hop being closeted and having a plethora of kids to prove manhood that, you know, and, and denial of something that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to deny, which is your sexuality. We come from a very homosexual era of hip hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. And uh, she was practically burned at the As serious claims encircle Diddy, fervent fans are fervently advocating for Wendy Williams' resurgence into the spotlight. Throughout her expansive media career, Wendy Williams, revered as the leading figure in entertainment news and gossip, fearlessly delved into celebrity rumors. She was an early advocate voicing concerns about Combs. Williams and Combs share a lengthy and contentious history. Williams commenced her tenure at New York City's Hot 97 radio station in 1994, coinciding with the establishment of Bad Boy Records in 1993 as a collaborative venture between Combs and Arista Records. As per BBC reports, Hot 97 showcased talents like the Notorious Big, Lil' Kim, Mace, Faith Evans, and Total, maintaining a constant radio presence. The station's launch coincided with Bad Boy's emergence, as stated by former Bad Boy president Kirk Burrow during a 2022 interview on the podcast The Art of Dialogue. Burrow highlighted that Bad Boy's records significantly contributed to Hot 97's rotation. In a 2009 episode of the Wendy Williams Experience radio show, Williams recalled an incident from her time at Hot 97. Allegedly, Combs instructed members of Total, an all-female R&B trio, to confront her. Williams recounted, I got off the air one day, and those Total girls were downstairs. Everyone upstairs at the radio station was observing, encouraging a confrontation. Williams explained that her boyfriend at the time intervened, preventing any further escalation. In that same 2022 interview, Burroughs provided insight into the East Coast-West Coast feud between Bad Boy and Death Row Records during the 1990s. He mentioned Williams' involvement, claiming that Combs' infant son and the child's mother, Misa Hilton, were allegedly compensated to take a picture with Combs' rival, Suge Knight. Word circulated back to the East Coast that Misa was present in the office and potentially meeting Justin Combs, possibly holding him in her arms while a photographer took a picture. Burroughs emphasized that this wasn't the image they wanted to convey or have seen by the public. Somehow, Williams caught wind of this photo and hinted at revealing significant news on her syndicated radio show. The bad boy team had to step in to prevent the photo from spreading to the public eye. During a 2022 Art of Dialogue interview, Combs' former bodyguard, Gene Deal, asserted that Combs influenced Williams' dismissal from her job at Hot 97 before she could discuss the photo on air. The deal highlighted Combs' substantial influence over New York radio stations, stating that if Combs disapproved of someone, they wouldn't last in the industry. Deal claimed that Combs managed to remove one of the most prominent DJs from Hot 97 because Williams intended to display a picture of Combs with his pants pulled down. According to Deal, Combs warned Hot 97 that unless they dismissed Williams before his return to New York, they wouldn't receive music from his associates or any support from record label executives allied with him. It was threatened that everyone associated with him would boycott their station upon his return to New York City. Consequently, while Combs was in control, Williams found herself in Philadelphia, addressing her departure from the radio market in New York City. In a 2013 interview with Vlad TV when discussing homophobia in hip-hop, it was mentioned that the hip-hop industry emerged from an era where there were notable homosexual influences. Reference was made to Wendy Williams a former radio personality who faced significant backlash. One fan has since commented, suggesting that an apology is owed to Wendy Williams, citing her past insights about Diddy that have proven accurate. However, recent revelations have shed light on other aspects of the hip-hop mogul's history. Diddy's past actions have been under scrutiny for several months, revealing a darker side to his character. Notably, in November, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, singer Cassie Ventura, filed a high-profile federal lawsuit against him, alleging consistent physical and emotional abuse throughout their relationship. The lawsuit, filed under New York's Adult Survivors Act, 
a legal provision affording victims a one-time, one-year opportunity to sue their alleged assailant regardless of the statute of limitations, detailed Ventura's claims against Combs. It asserted that Combs subjected Ventura to a distressing pattern of abuse and sexual assault. Moreover, the lawsuit alleged that Combs coerced Ventura into participating in sexual activities with male associates in various cities, which he purportedly observed and recorded. Ventura expressed that she refrained from reporting these incidents to the police out of fear, fearing it would provoke further harm from Combs. Following Ventura's lawsuit, three additional women stepped forward with serious accusations against Combs. Liza Gardner, filing just before the expiration of the Adult Survivors Act window on November 23rd, alleged that she was coerced into a sexual encounter with Combs at an after-party in either 1990 or 1991. Another accuser, Joey Dickerson Neal, alleged intentional drugging and assault by Combs following a dinner in 1991. Adding to these allegations, a fourth lawsuit emerged on December 6th, filed by an anonymous woman identified as Jane Doe. She accused Combs, his longtime associate Harve Pierre, and an unnamed third party of assaulting her at Combs' Manhattan Recording Studio in 2003, when she was just 17 years old. Meanwhile, Jay-Z has maintained a notably quiet stance amidst these allegations against his friend. Speculation suggests he's deliberately keeping a low profile to prevent the spotlight from turning toward him. Comparatively, Sean Carter, known as Jay-Z, is perceived as more cautious, strategic, and calculated in handling such situations. Over the years, rumors have circulated linking Jay-Z to Aaliyah's death, speculating that she rejected his advances. It's known that Jay-Z had a close relationship with R. Kelly, the man allegedly involved with Aaliyah. Speculation about a secretive union arose in 1994, linking R. Kelly, the acclaimed R&B artist, and Aaliyah, the promising rising star. Rumors suggested that they exchanged vows in a covert ceremony, adding intrigue to the speculation. The substantial age gap between them intensified the speculation. Aaliyah, a young 15-year-old artist, and R. Kelly, a 27-year-old musical luminary. Allegedly, the purported nuptials occurred on August 31, 1994, in Rosemont, Illinois, reportedly taking place within the confines of a hotel room, shrouded in secrecy and validated by a falsified marriage certificate. Subsequent revelations indicated that Aaliyah had misrepresented her age on the document, claiming to be 18 while R. Kelly's true age was accurately recorded. The secrecy surrounding this union was undeniably influenced by the significant legal and ethical implications of an adult artist marrying an underage girl. The revelation caused seismic ripples across the music industry and beyond. Aaliyah, a remarkable talent on the brink of stardom, and R. Kelly, the Grammy-winning musician, found themselves embroiled in a scandal that would echo for years. As whispers escalated, so did the probing questions. How did a 15-year-old manage to marry without parental consent? Why was such a pivotal event veiled from public awareness? Gradually, the truth began to surface. It emerged that Aaliyah's age had been misrepresented on the marriage certificate, an unsettling detail that magnified the seriousness of the situation. Initially kept in the dark, Aaliyah's family soon became aware of the alleged marriage. The revelation reportedly triggered not only outrage due to the secretive nature of the union, but also concern over the potential exploitation of their teenage daughter. The family swiftly took action to dissolve the illegal union. The annulment focused on Aaliyah's age, asserting that she lacked the legal capacity to marry without parental consent. The abrupt termination of the union left lingering inquiries not just about the marriage's legality, but also about the dynamics between the two artists. The fallout from the scandal had extensive repercussions for both R. Kelly and Aaliyah. Despite Aaliyah's undeniable talent and burgeoning success, she found herself entangled in a narrative beyond her control. Meanwhile, R. Kelly faced enduring scrutiny that marred his career, becoming a troubling aspect of his legacy. The specter of the alleged marriage lingered, casting a long shadow over the personal and professional lives of both artists. Aaliyah continued to ascend in her career, achieving success in music and later branching into acting. 
However, the controversy surrounding her early years persisted as a topic of discussion, overshadowing her accomplishments and becoming an inescapable part of her legacy. R. Kelly, already a contentious figure due to his explicit lyrics and legal entanglements, became mired in a succession of scandals and accusations that lingered over him for decades. The purported marriage to Aliyah became a focal point in discussions about the artist's relationships with underage girls, further tarnishing his public image. In the ensuing years, the details of this alleged marriage intermittently resurfaced, gaining fresh attention, particularly with the release of documentaries like Surviving R. Kelly. These documentaries delved into the intricate web of allegations against the artist, encompassing claims of abuse and exploitation. Notably, the docu-series recently unveiled that R. Kelly reportedly silenced Aaliyah and her family through a non-disclosure agreement after his marriage and subsequent annulment to the then 15-year-old singer. According to Aaliyah's ex, Dame Dash, even after Jay-Z became aware of Kelly's exploitation of Aaliyah and the illicit marriage when she was only 15, he chose not to sever ties with Kelly. Dame Dash confirmed these rumors and disclosed that Aaliyah never held any romantic interest in Jay-Z. Despite Jay-Z's frequent presence whenever Aaliyah attended industry events, she had a preference for Dame Dash. Allegedly, Jay-Z decided to position Beyonce to fill Aaliyah's place during those times. Around that period, tension escalated between Jay-Z and Dame, eventually culminating in 2001, tragically coinciding with Aaliyah's fatal plane crash in the Bahamas. Interestingly, that same year, Jay-Z and Beyonce publicly acknowledged their relationship. Less than a year later, Jay-Z released his collaborative album with R. Kelly, Best of Both Worlds. Following the exposure of R. Kelly's crimes, Jay-Z's public relations team reportedly made extensive efforts to bury any traces of their friendship and association. Despite extensive PR efforts, some individuals retained knowledge of and remembered Jay-Z's association with R. Kelly. One such person was Jaguar Wright, who had first-hand experience working with R. Kelly on numerous records. They collaborated extensively, sharing a history that included Aaliyah. Jaguar pointed out the significant collaboration between Jay-Z and R. Kelly on Best of Both Worlds, emphasizing that discussions about this collaboration seemed to fade into obscurity. Jaguar revealed candidly, indicating that Jay-Z couldn't handle being chosen second to Dame Dash. Her statements carried weight as she was a background singer on Jay-Z's MTV Unplugged performance in 2001, lending credibility to her insights into the dynamics within the music industry. In the same year as Aaliyah's tragic departure, Jay-Z was in the midst of collaborating on Best of Both Worlds with R. Kelly. Given her access to the behind-the-scenes aspects of the music industry, Jaguar likely witnessed a captivating drama unfold behind closed doors. In the intricate web of the music world, Jaguar subtly alludes to a narrative involving jealousy, hidden desires, and intense rivalries. Jaguar's implications of Jay-Z's purported envy regarding Aaliyah's affections raise questions, particularly in light of the publicized love triangle involving Dame Dash. Nonetheless, it seems the growing wildfire of allegations is swiftly encircling these influential figures. Following the potential fallout surrounding Diddy, Jay-Z might find himself under scrutiny if the legal system manages to pursue him. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.